Hello and a very warm welcome to Holy Trinity Church in Stratford-upon-Avon today for our Easter Day celebration of the Eucharist. We're delighted that you've joined us here as we celebrate with joy and with hope the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So wherever you are, we join together in this act of worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The God of life who broke the bonds of death and raised Jesus from the tomb be with you all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our journey through Holy Week through to Easter Day today has been accompanied by a garden. The garden is up in the sanctuary behind me at the top of the church in front of the high altar. On Maundy Thursday, it was the Garden of Gethsemane. On Good Friday, it was the Garden of Golgotha. Today, it's our Easter garden. And I'm going to say a prayer now to bless the garden. Let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, bless our Easter garden, that those who see it might recognize you and the power of your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. The choir now sing for us our wonderful Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. brothers and sisters, this is the morning on which the Lord appeared to his friends and opened their eyes to what the scriptures had foretold. As we celebrate his glorious resurrection, I invite those of you who are baptized to renew your commitment to worship and serve God. Baptism means turning to Christ, repenting of our sins and renouncing evil. Do you renew your allegiance to Christ? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, I will. 
Will you persevere in resisting evil and, whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice? May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, forgive you your sins, and give you strength to continue in the way. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Having affirmed together our baptismal commitment, let us now be ready to listen with open ears and hearts to the good news of the gospel message this Easter day. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sent out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw that the stone had been removed and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came. To the tomb. I don't know if I've ever been so desperate for an Easter Sunday to arrive as I have this year. After last year, I should have been prepared for all the challenges, and maybe there was a novelty value in it was the first time I'd ever experienced a pandemic. But for some reason this year, perhaps the frustration of things dragging on has well and truly hit. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'd hoped that all of this was a bad dream from which Easter Sunday would shake me awake. Perhaps from my deep desire for things to be back to normal somewhere deep inside, I'd thought that Easter would fundamentally change things. Possibly I was just so desperate for the comfort of familiarity. Well-known hymns and songs and readings and liturgies that we could almost remember by heart. But yet again, this Easter is not normal, no matter how hard we might pretend. To share one expression that I've seen floating around the internet, this is the lentiest Lent I have ever lented. And today, I'm still feeling the absence and the loss. Today, I am missing my family, with whom I would normally gather of an Easter Sunday evening, to begin my post-Easter recovery. 
but again, not this year. Today, I am missing my communities of faith. I'm missing you all, as we would otherwise be. I'm missing the sense of fellowship and belonging. I'm missing hearing you sing hymns and worship songs with the clergy and a full choir, music group or worship band, be it here at Holy Trinity, All Saints Ludington or St. Helens Clifford Chambers. I mean, I'm not fussy, but it isn't just the same without you. And today, if I'm honest, I might even be missing God. Though God is everywhere, I know, and we've heard it said often enough, but when you've been used to worshipping God in a particular way and connecting with God through a certain set of liturgies and practices, their absence can feel like someone has stolen God. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. I wonder what Mary was hoping to discover that first Easter. I wonder why she had come to the tomb. And I know what you're thinking. Wasn't she coming to properly prepare Jesus' body for burial? Well, in Matthew, Mark and Luke's account, yes, she was. But in John's version, no. For you see, the secret disciples, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, had already prepared Jesus' body for burial on the Friday. And indeed, Nicodemus had brought an abundant and expensive and wasteful amount of burial spices, probably part of Nicodemus's own potential redemption. So why had Mary come? What was she hoping to find? Perhaps like us, she had hoped that the loss of Friday was a bad dream. Perhaps out of her love and devotion for Jesus, she had desired to keep vigil at his tomb. Maybe she had no rational explanation at all, but unable to sleep, found the strong pull of grief, moving her feet back towards what she had lost. But whatever it was she had hoped to find when she got there, she didn't. Her plans were rudely interrupted by the living, risen Jesus who had other ideas. I don't know what you imagine when you listen to the gospel accounts of the resurrection. In my own mind, I imagine on that first Easter, a sunrise. I always imagine the light of that new day shining through the gaps in the leaves as the trees begin to cast their shadows on the ground, much like when I'm walking up the path early before an eight o'clock service when the sun just dapples through the row of lime trees. That you can feel that warmth of the sun's rays and perhaps imagine them sort of that rays radiating off the disciples' cheeks as they come and see what has happened. Yet in the desire for that dawn of Easter Sunday morning to break, it is easy to miss what has been happening in the dark. There is an old saying that nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. Some might dispute that, particularly if you had student days like I once had, except that it is in an after 2 a.m. in the dark that precisely God's good news comes. And why is that? Well, it's simply this. Resurrection is not a daylight activity. It happens in the witching hours, where most of the world is overcome by exhaustion, despair and sleep. It comes to those who are utterly broken, grieving the loss of hope for a future that they had long desired. And it arrives in ways that are easy to miss when life has been turned upside down. But this is the good news of Easter Sunday that the risen Christ comes to us while it is still dark. For those of us who spend their entire lives trying to remain in the safety and sentimentality that comes with our privilege, 
for those of us who are trying desperately to avoid even admitting the reality of darkness and grief. For those of us who want to celebrate Easter Sunday without experiencing the utter terror of Good Friday, the resurrection's true power can be all too easily missed. For when the floodlights of your denial are shining brightly, the quiet fluttering dance of a new light of the resurrected Christ can seem insignificant or unreal. How attractive it is to pretend that things are other than they are. How seductive to try and cling to what used to be and to dream about the return to some golden age in the past that never really existed. For the inconvenient truth is this, resurrection isn't true resurrection without death and loss and grief. Resurrection is not an act of mere resuscitation and a return to continuing life as it was. And to paraphrase a quote by the American self-help author Dave Hollis, which has done the rounds on the internet, in the rush to return to normal, it is worth considering which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. COVID-19 lockdown shielding furloughs have come with significant cost and loss, but it has also brought about some amazing signs of newness and resurrection. Neighbours looking out for one another, a deep appreciation for nurses, medical and care staff, teachers, supermarket workers, cleaners and others who have often been undervalued and governments seemingly letting go of the old adage that you have to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and instead now forced to step in and provide. And not just for the poorest and most vulnerable in our societies, but also for those who never expected to be in this position or to lose their employment. And then I wondered, what was the barrier for us in this country in not having done that before? For when resurrection comes, when it truly comes, and the risen Christ is so rudely interrupting our plans, it comes with both a promise and yet a demand on our lives. God isn't done yet. God is still weaving hope out of chaos and unfolding life among us and plants the seed of yearning in our hearts that the best is yet to come. And so Jesus says to us, as he said to Mary all those years ago, do not hold on to me. Do not cling to what was. For if you do, you might just miss the best part. And the reality that what is and can be gained is far greater than what was lost. So let us today on this Easter Sunday live into God's promised future, even while it is still dark. Amen. Thank you, Steve. So as we look with continued hope to the future, let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as we stand to say, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. We turn now to the liturgy of the sacrament and begin that by sharing with one another Christ's peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. 
The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. We offer one another here in the church, and if you're at home with others, do offer them a sign of peace, or if you like, send a message to a loved one to let them know you're thinking of them this Easter day. As bread and wine are brought here to the altar, so we also bring before God our prayers and concerns on this Easter day. We pray especially at this time among those who are unwell for David Laverty and Liz Murphy, and also those in hospital including Sean Wade and Edith Brooks. 
and to remember among those who have died Gordon Bromley and Patricia Phillips, and those whose anniversary of death falls in this week, Brian Miller and Bob Schofield. We commend them to God's heavenly and eternal glory. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the heights. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. On this day we rejoice that he defied death, rose again, and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us and on these gifts, that by them we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia!
as we rejoice in Christ's presence with us. So we pray together. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Easter celebration draws towards its close now, I want to say a few very important thank yous. A very big thank you to, firstly, our flower teams who've done a fantastic job preparing and decorating the church for our Easter celebration this year. And particularly thank you to those of them who put together the Easter garden, which is much bigger uh, than what we normally have and uh, has been a real focus for our celebration. So thank you to you in our flower teams. A huge thank you to all these wonderful people standing behind me, our choir, our director of music. Uh, thank you to you all, especially Rebecca, for your work too. Uh, you've worked so hard these last few days. And we're very grateful for all your music. Thanks also to the music group who've been playing today. It's really great to have you here celebrating with us and augmenting our music today. I want to thank our AV team uh, who have been busy working the cameras and the sound uh, and the video in order to ensure that we can live stream all of our services. Lots of preparation work involved there and I'm very grateful to all of you. I want also to thank our church wardens who work especially hard at this time of year, particularly Paul and Helen who've done most of the preparation work for our walkthrough services which have been a great success again but have required a lot of work behind the scenes. So thank you to our wardens. Normally at this point on Easter Day in our thank yous, I would reserve the biggest thank you for our vergers who would normally work incredibly hard, our paid verging staff. Sadly, we no longer have paid verging staff, which has meant that the whole church community has had to pull together. and We've all had to muck in. I found myself hanging off the top of a ladder earlier to light the candles on our candelabra. Um, but everybody, not just the clergy, have had to do extra tasks to make sure everything works and is ready. And so I want to say thank you to everybody who's contributed to our worship this Easter in the parish. It's a real joy to see the church community come together to celebrate this special feast, but also to offer our worship to others as well. So thank you. Finally, thank you for those who've joined us watching and listening to this service. And finally, I just want to wish you and your loved ones a very happy and blessed Easter. Our choir will now sing our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Easter and always. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in the joy and peace of Christ. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia.